Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Mariam, Senior Lecturer from the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. Today I'm going to discuss about the topic hemorrhage and its management. These are the content which I'm going to talk about today. Introduction, Types, Hemostasis Mechanism, Bleeding Disorder and Management of Hemorrhage. Coming to the introduction part, Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is defined as the escape of blood from the ruptured blood vessel. And this hemorrhage can be classified into four based on the source, the site, time of appearance and percentage of blood loss. Based on the source, it can be classified as arterial venous capillary. Based on the site of appearance, it can be classified as internal hemorrhage and external hemorrhage. Based on the time of appearance, it can be classified as primary, reactionary and secondary. Based on the percentage of blood loss, it can be classified as class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4. Uh, primary hemorrhage. Primary hemorrhage is nothing but the bleeding occurring at the time of injury. Whereas secondary hemorrhage is a hemorrhage that when the primary bleeding has stopped once, the wound starts to bleed again after 24 hours to several days. If this secondary hemorrhage can be due to the dislodgement of clot, secondary trauma to the wound, either infection or elevation of blood pressure. Whereas the intermediate hemorrhage is a bleeding occurring within 8 hours after the stoppage of bleeding. This can be due to the loose foreign body in the wound like calculus, broken bone pieces or either pre-existing granulation tissue in the extraction socket. So it is always must to clear the extraction socket that is if there is any granulation tissue or calculus or bo broken bone pieces uh, it should be curatized very well so that uh, to prevent the intermediate hemorrhage. Coming to the internal or external hemorrhage, internal hemorrhage uh, is a bleeding that is confined within the bony cavity that is within the body cavity whereas the external hemorrhage is the blood escaping through the wound in the skin. Spontaneous hemorrhage that is a spontaneous bleeding it can occur without any provocation like acquired or hereditary coagulopathies. Next coming to the hemostasis mechanism. When the vessel wall is injured that is when the vessel is injured uh, this hemostasis occur through various stages. We all know that hemostasis is defined as the arrest or stoppage of bleeding and these stages include when the vessel wall uh, vasoconstriction of the injured vessel, next is the platelet plug formation and formation of blood clot by the coagulation mechanism and next is the clot retraction. Coagulation mechanism occurs via the this clotting factors from factor 1 to factor 13. Factor 1 is fibrinogen, 2 is prothrombin, 3 is thromboplastin, 4 is calcium, 5 is pro, uh, proaxillerin, 6 is same as factor 5 and 7 is proconvertin and 8 is antihemophilic factor, 9 is plasma thromboplastin component and 10 is steward power factor and 11 is plasma thromboplastin antecedent and 12 is Hegman factor and 13 is fibrin stabilizing factor. The bleeding disorder. The bleeding disorder can be either due to the defect in coagulation mechanism or defect in the pra platelet that is either uh, platelet count is reduced which is known as thrombocytopenia or disease in the, uh, and there is uh, abnormalities in the capillary. So if there is a di uh, disease which uh, in defect in the coagulation mechanism it can be uh, either hemophilia A or hemophilia B or hypoprothrombinemia. Whereas if there is a defect in the any abnormalities of the capillary or hereditary hemorrhagic telangiect telangiectasia and von Willebrand disease. Clinical evaluation of bleeding. So when there is a, if the patient comes with bleeding, careful clinical evaluation is must, which is uh, previous history should be evaluated, physical examination, whether uh, to find out the bleeding is uh, abnormal or normal. If either whether we have to evaluate it is either from the internal or external. The bleeding is either from the capillary or veins or artery. So this is must. So we have to evaluate the vessel wall, the platelet and the process of coagulation. So th these three should be considered. And next is the laboratory test for screening. Uh, the screening tests include the bleeding time, clotting time, platelet count, prothrombin time and partial thromboplastin time. The bleeding time is the time from the occurrence of the injury to the platelet plug formation. That is the uh, time of uh, bleeding to the platelet plug formation. So bleeding time can be due to uh, in the range uh, maximum up to 7 to 8 minutes, like 2 to 8 minutes. Whereas the clotting time is a uh, blood uh, required to clot. That is, uh, uh, it can be from the uh, uh, from the platelet plug formation to the time required to clot. It can be maximum up to 7 to 15 minutes. The platelet count uh, is uh, uh, the platelet count uh, uh, is from 1.5 to 4.5 lakhs. Uh, the prothrombin time is uh, th uh, uh, is uh, varying about 11 to 
13.5 seconds whereas a partial thromboblastin time is from 60 to 70 seconds this bleeding time indicates if there is any uh, defect in the platelet so this clotting time uh, indicate if there is any defect in the clotting factors and this uh, uh, platelet count uh, indicates if there is any elevation of uh, if there is an elevation of platelet it is known as thrombocytosis if there is a uh, depression that is if there is a uh, re uh, reduced platelet count that is below 1.5 it is known as thrombocytopenia this prothrombin prothrombin is a protein which is uh, metabolized in liver so if this prothrombin time is increased it indicates that there is a severe liver disease or liver cirrhosis so management, uh, coming to the management part, uh, it can be classified into management of a normal patient and management of the bleeding disorder patient. Management of the normal patient, uh, these are the basic steps which can be needed, uh, which can be done. Uh, application of the pressure, uh, with the application of pressure with the cotton swab and use of hemostatic agent, either mechanical, thermal or chemical method. And then uh, using hypertensive anesthesia, securing blood, uh, blood vessel with the hemostats. Mechanical method is uh, application of uh, pressure. Uh, application of um, uh, next is the mechanical method is the application of pressure, use of hemostasis, sutures and ligation. Uh, thermal agents are uh, cautery, electrosurgery, cryosurgery, organ beam uh, coagulator and lasers. Whereas chemical can be local and systemic. Local is uh, use of astringent, bone wax, thrombin, gel foam, oxycell, uh, surgery cell, fibrin glue, adrenaline. Whereas the systemic agent includes whole blood, platelet rich plasma, flow, fresh flows in plasma, cryoprecipitate and uh, adrenochrome. So application uh, coming to the first initially when there is a patient reporting you with the blood pressure I mean with the increase in the uh, bleeding or uh, the hemostasis is not achieved properly so first thing uh, to be done is the application of the pressure with a cotton swab. Secondly use of hemostatic agent that is uh, thermal agents uh, like electrocautery this is done by heat achieves the hemostasis by denaturation of protein coagulation of large areas of tissue occurs by induction from the alternating current source that is a cautery point the point is touched to achieve the hemostasis and sealing of the blood vessel the burning smell indicates the tissue destruction and this is not used for the large arteries that is large vessels then the argon beam coagulator the new form of electrocautery tip of the coagulator held one centimeter away from the tissue flow of organ gas cleans the surgical field lasers the lasers used in the hemostasis are the carbon dioxide laser argon laser and ndag carbon dioxide, uh, carbon dioxide laser is the most common wavelength used in the oral and maxillofacial surgery owing to its excellent absorption by water containing tissues such as mucosa and skin when working on large lesion when uh, with significant vascularity such as hemangioma a major advantage of the use of the uh, laser in surgery is the reduction of incidence of bleeding complications, especially when operating in babies, small infants, particularly useful in large areas of difficult access such as soft palate or soft tissue graft and donor sites. Next is the mechanical agents used are the bone wax. The bleeding from the bone can be arrested with the help of the bone wax and the, uh, the composition includes the bee wax, olive oil, phenol and isopropyl palmi uh, palmitate. Acts by mechanical occlusion of the bony canal. Large quantities should not be used because it can lead to infection. The chemical agents like astringent and styptics, the tannic acid precipitates the protein and causes the clot formation. Ferric subsulfate uh, precipitates the protein. The silver nitrate and ferric chloride used in the capillary bleeding. Surgical cell. This surgical cell is uh, reabsorbable oxidized cellulose material. It works very efficiently. As it is absorbed, it can be safely buried in the tissues. It binds platelet chemically, precipitates fibrin. Local mechanism depends on binding of hemoglobin to oxycellulose, allowing dressing to expand into brownish gelatin mass that aids in clotting. Does not inhibit the epithelialization and hence it is used in epithelial surface. This gel form is made from the gelatin that is sponge like material main hemostatic activity related to large surface area which comes in contact with the blood and further swells on absorbing blood so it gets liquefied within one week and gets completely reabsorbed in four to six weeks by phagocytosis next is securing blood vessels with the hemostats uh, hemostats like uh, used in the um, um, securing the blood vessel is a Halstead's mosquito artery forcep. It is one of the effective methods for securing the vessel. The tips of the hemostat should be applied over and below the above and below the bleeding point. The end of the hemostat is twisted a couple of times around the blood vessel before removing it. Uh, the hemorrhage usually ceases.
the control of the blood vessel from the major arteries uh, the arteries which are encountered during the oral and maxillofacial surgery procedures are the glottal palatine lingual artery facial artery maxillary artery superficial temporal and carotid artery Uh, so uh, when securing these uh, artery that is when ligating these artery the hypotensive anesthesia is must so this hypotensive anesthesia it can be employed when working under general anesthesia in order to reduce the operative bleeding in this technique the patient's patient's blood pressure is lowered by the use of hypotensive agent so that the bleeding is greatly reduced it is indicated when the utmost dry field is necessary and can be achieved hemorrhage when can it cannot be achieved hemorrhage by other methods so the incision planning so basically to avoid a uh, hemorrhage the incision is placed parallel to the long axis of the blood vessel so that it will not damage to the blood vessel incision should not be given on the inflamed area proper dissection of the tissue without tearing so careful dissection of the blood vessel is must in order to prevent the hemorrhage so coming to the greater palatine artery This greater palatine is highly vascular and it is difficult to control that is clamping is difficult so since the clamping uh, that is a uh, use of heme stats is difficult in the greater palatine artery gauze compression is used the pressure packed gauze is compressed and sutured uh, inside the palate how it is sutured a round bolus of gauze is made of adequate size so that it does not cause gagging and it is kept in place by tie suture over Uh, for one to two days, that is, uh, for forty-eight hours, this pressure pack can be safely removed after forty-eight hours. Next is the ligation of lingual artery. Where is the lingual artery located? It is a uh, located in submandibular triangle, and uh, it can be approached via the submandibular incision uh, from the gonial angle to the mental region, um, and then the skin, platysma, deep fascia are incised, and lower pole of the submandibular gland is exposed. Then the submandibular gland is lifted up, and the tendon of the digastric muscle is also exposed. The mylohyoid and the hyoglossus muscles are identified, and then this hyoglossus nerve uh, is also identified at the posterior border of the mylohyoid muscle. The lingual triangle, that is the lesser triangle, is formed by the digastric tendon, posterior uh, mylohyoid border, and the hypoglossal nerve. Within this triangle is a lingual artery is located where where it is identified and ligated next is coming to the facial artery this is also a branch of external carotid artery and it is it can be easily ligated at the point where it crosses the lower border of the mandible just anterior to the mesenteric muscle after clenching of the teeth uh, the pulsation of the facial artery can become prominent over the anterior border of the uh, mesenteric it is isolated tight and cut careful when dissection as the facial veins runs posterior to the facial artery and facial nerve runs over it maxillary artery since it is a li- uh, it's deeply located the ligation is very difficult so the terminal branches are ligated with the transantral approach superficial temporal artery the pulsation can be felt in the preauricular region and the ligation can be done in, by the preauricular approach external carotid artery ligation of the external carotid artery in the carotid triangle neck is neck is distended and rotated into the opposite side incision is given at the level of the thyroid bone hyoid bone The skin platysma and the superficial facial layer of the deep cervical fascia is cut. Sternocleidomastoid muscle is deflected back, and then carotid sheet is exposed. Then the external carotid artery is identified by its branching and ligate above the origin of the superior thyroid artery. The management of the pa- uh, bleeding in the uh, disorder. Pa- I mean, management of patients in the bleeding disorder patient, which is like hemophilia A, B, and hyperprothrombinemia and uh, von Willebrand disease. So this is a. Uh, like uh, hemophilia is uh, denoted in the healthy patient and in hemophilic patient normal blood vessel when uh, it is ruptured clotting occurs whereas in uh, no uh, in in case of hemophilia in case of hemophilia the inability to clot so uh, the uh, hemophilia a is a deficiency of factor 8 whereas hemophilia b is a deficiency of factor 9 So investigations done for this is a clotting time, partial thromboplastin time, and activated partial thromboplastin time. The treatment depends upon the factor level. That is, uh, uh, when it is uh, below, uh, when it is uh, uh, below uh, 0.01 micron, it is severe, and uh, when it is 0.02 to 0.05, it is moderate. When it is uh, less than 0.05, it is considered as mild. so the goal of the treatment is to raise the defi- uh, deficient factor to a level that it will control bleeding 
pharmacological therapy for hemophilia A desmopressin uh, acetate is used for hemophilia B there is no effective pharmacological treatment replacement therapy is with factor concentrate fresh flows in plasma and cryoprecipitate epsilon amino carboic acid antifibrinolytic substance synthetic inhibitor of the plasma and plasminogen system used to increase the stability of clot fresh flows in plasma the plasma removed from the fresh blood uh, within 4 hours is rapidly frozen by immersing into solid carbon dioxide ethyl alcohol mixture stored in the 40 degree minus 40 degree to minus 50 degree the unit is about 200 to 250 cc volume and good source in all of all coagulation factor use in severe liver, uh, liver failure mild to mild form of individual clotting factor deficiency example christmas disease and hemophilia the cryo precipitate is prepared by freezing fresh flows in plasma Uh, is allowed to thaw at 4 degree uh, centigrade and the supernaturated uh, super superint uh, plasma is removed the glutinous precipitate is called the cryo precipitate the one unit contains about 10 to 20 cc the very rich source of factor 8 and fibrinogen used in hemophilia a and next is hypothrombinemia decreased prothrombin level and prothrombin is produced in liver and uh, vitamin k is required for the synthesis and it is uh, important for the formation of the factor 2 7 9 and 10 Investigation is the prothrombin time, and uh, treatment uh, is can be given the intramuscular administration of vitamin K and uh, vitamin K analog substitutes. Hemorrhage in patients with von Willebrand disease. The disease is also known as pseudo hemophilia and was first described in 1926, and it is due to the deficiency of von Willebrand factor. It affects both men and women, secondary to defective platelet addition to sub uh, subendothelium. Treatment can be uh, for type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 is uh, desmopressin acetate uh, 0.3 UG per kg is given and whereas in type 2, factor A concentrates or cryoprecipitates is given and factor 3, uh, I mean for type 3, factor 8 concentrate or cryoprecipitate is given. So tranexamic acid is useful in adjective therapy, uh, 525 mg per kg uh, and thrice daily for 5 days is given. So these are the references. Thank you.